So let's just cut to the chase and take a first look at Warcaster Neo Mechanica. So welcome everybody, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield, and Warcaster Neo Mechanica is Privateer Press's new sci-fi miniatures game. It launched early this year as part of a Kickstarter, and this guy just showed up on Medora Step about three days ago, four days ago. And the time I'm recording this, haven't got a game in yet, but hopefully this weekend, which would be the day before this video is released, hopefully I will get a game in. But let's open this box up and see what's inside. So this box right here is the Iron Star Alliance Command Group. It is one of the starter sets that will be available for the game. And it'll retail for $70 US, I believe. The Kickstarter version is pretty close to the retail version, but there are a few extras that I got with the Kickstarter that won't be included with the main game. So let's take a look what we got here. First and foremost, you have your rule book as well as a little bit of lore. So this is kind of a pretty, bit of a miniature summary, the story of Warcaster Neo Mechanica. And then of course you've got pretty much your entire um, rule book behind it. Now, as part of the Kickstarter, they announced that the rule book is available for download digitally. I will put a link to that in the show notes. Um, I'm pretty sure it's available to everybody and not just the Kickstarter people, but if it is available publicly, you'll find a link to the rule book in the show notes if you want to check that out. Next up, I have a whole bunch of the cards here. We'll talk about these things in a bit. There's, there's, some, there's something, something strange about them, we'll say. But um, first up here, these are part of the Kickstarter exclusive stuff, I believe. Or at least they don't come in the normal starter set. And they are story cards about the different units you have in the game. These are one of the stretch bonuses that got unlocked with their, quote, Earth-friendly packaging, which just meant a rubber band. <laughs> I love marketing. Then you've got your, all your different stat cards for your units, as well as some optional weapons for your Warjacks. So that's something a little bit different for a Warcaster. We'll talk a bit more about that in just a bit here. And then you have what are called Cypher cards. These are essentially a deck of cards you have during the game. You draw these and you can play them on your turn and various other times to give yourself some really cool, powerful abilities. And the last few cards we have are, it looks to be some story information about the background of the world as well as some characters. And also then we have some, a quick reference card to give you an idea of how your turn will play out. And then we get to the fun stuff, or the stuff everybody wants to see, and that would be the miniatures. They're all pewter at the moment in the starter set, so be sure to wash off any mold release before assembling, which I actually did before I recorded this video. So these guys are ready to go for assembly purposes. And there are two additional bags of miniatures in here that came in with it because of the Kickstarter and will not be in the retail set. I'll point those out when we get to that point. And then there are the dice. Now these are monster apocalypse style dice. Unfortunately, I didn't actually buy any of the new Monster Apocalypse stuff, even though the game was freaking amazing the first time it came out. So I'm not entirely sure if the new Monster Apocalypse had the larger dice, but the old one had tiny little dice. But they're roughly, you know, they're multicolored. They just simply have strike and super strike symbols on them. Uh, there it is. <laughs> the double super strike is there. So that's the system that's used in Warcaster. So gone are the D6 adding and all weird sorts of weird stuff. There are two additional 30 millimeter bases. These are for your void gate tokens, which are somewhere in the token sheet. There they are. So here's your token sheet for the game. You've got some things to keep track of the game turns, an assortment of condition tokens. You have your arc tokens, which are kind of like focus and fury and that they can power up your units. Um, here's your void gates I was talking about where you can summon new guys in as well as some other status tracking things and these are all double-sided tokens. So now let's dive into the miniature to take a bit more of a deeper look at that. And while I'm, and while I'm assembling those, I'm going to talk a little bit about the game. Now like I said, I haven't got to play it just quite yet so this is definitely not a review. It's more of just a very general overview of what you're going to expect with Warcaster Neo Mechanica. So this game is actually a bit of a hybrid between War Machine as well as Monster Apocalypse, and it's got a little bit of flavor of Warhammer tossed in there. So let's start with that last part and explain a little bit of flavor of Warhammer. As I mentioned when I was looking at the cards, 
The War Jacks in this game don't have set configurations. They actually have a number of weapon points that you can assign and you can purchase a customized variation of a War Jack. Now, this sort of existed in War Machine, at least back when I was playing it, because you had things like the Ironclad and the Defender, which were essentially storyline wise, the same chassis, but different weapons. However, from a force construction perspective, they were discrete units. So it was sort of there, not quite as crazy as Warhammer, where you got tables of different options you could put on your units. Now that's obviously a little bit different here with Warcaster, because at the moment, I believe each of the light war jacks that are available in the game have five weapon options. And in the case, say the Firebrand, which is the war jack that comes with Iron Star Alliance, he has five weapon points, and each of the weapons he has costs between one and three weapon points, and he has three different hard points where he can attach those weapons. And you know, weapons are restricted not only by point cost, but hard point cost as well. Now being a sci-fi version of War Machine, because this story is the future of the War Machine universe. It takes place, I believe, 5,000 years after the current events of War Machine. The game does have a bit of a War Machine feel to it. If you look at one of the stat cards, you're going to see a lot of similarities. For example, you got your speed, strength, mat, rat, defense, and arm. And you have the arc token concept, which is not exactly the same as Focus and Fury, but it kind of plays the same role where you can allocate this energy to various things in the battlefield. And it can be used to make the units more powerful and also can be used to summon more units to the battlefield, which I think is one of the more interesting aspects of this game. Which brings me to the next point of how it's got a little bit of monster apocalypse to it. So not only are the dice reminiscent of Monster Apocalypse, but like in that game where you can capture buildings and score points and summon in units using action dice, in addition to the arc tokens I was talking a moment ago about powering up your units in the battlefield, you can spend those at void gates, which you deploy throughout the game to reinforce your armies in different areas of the battlefield. And here's why I actually find this pretty interesting as a concept for a miniatures game like this. The biggest complaint I've had about most tabletop games in the past I don't know, a few, seven, eight years at this point, including Warhammer 40,000, to a lesser extent Star Wars Legion and whatnot, there wasn't a whole lot of reason to try to play for the objective because it's so easy to table your opponent. Now, in more Castle and Mechanica, where you've got guys coming in all the time for the battlefield, it is theoretically possible to wipe out everybody in the battlefield in one turn and end the game, but it's highly unlikely. At least, it seems like it'd be highly unlikely. I could be wrong six months from now, but... <laughs> Because there is a rule in the rule book for, um, it's the mercy rule, if you do manage to wipe out every enemy unit on the battlefield at the end of the turn, they do lose the game. We'll see if that actually ever comes into play, and maybe, maybe not, hopefully it's incredibly rare. Because I like the fact that the game does have a heavy focus on objective based play, and the rule book does have a number of scenarios in the end that you can play. So one of the departures from War Machine is going to be the dice mechanics because it uses the Monster Apocalypse dice. Now it's sort of like War Machine, but it's not quite as detailed because if you played that before, you know there are things like you had a Strength 7 plus a Power 4 melee weapon, and then you would add 3d6 to that and then subtract your target's armor of 18, and then based on how much is left over, you do so much damage. A lot of double digit math which isn't hard but kind of annoying. Now in this game you compare strike counts, you get extra dice or bonuses, so there's a lot of dice off in this game. So one of the other big departures from War Machine is that your Warcaster is not on the battlefield. You yourself are the Warcaster and you're sitting somewhere in some command ship or bunker, I'm not entirely sure, and you're just orchestrating the battle from there. Now to simulate the effect of having the powerful Warcaster on the field, is where the cipher cards come in because those kind of represent the spells and other powerful abilities that a war caster from War Machine would have had. And that's why you can play those things throughout the battle to kind of effectively change the battle at key moments, kind of like if your powerful war caster was there smacking people around. But the advantage to this system, even though they don't have that powerful unit on the battlefield, is that you also don't gotta worry about that powerful unit getting killed and having the game end just like that. And frankly, that's probably kinda nice. I think I'll enjoy that more. A total random aside, I was terrible at War Machine. <sighs> There's a reason I stopped playing the game because I think my record was 0 and 10, 0 and 15, something disgusting like that. I'm like, this is, no, I'm done. <laughs> So hopefully I'll get a little bit better luck with Warcaster and you know, Mechanica. Like I said, some of these features I do find very interesting from a mechanical perspective. 
Yeah, after using a cordless drill, some baby powder, and huffing super glue for about two hours, I really don't miss pewter miniatures. <laughs> but they're together. Let's take a look at them. So first off, these are the void gates. These are the Kickstarter bonus. Then I've got the two commanders. This one right here is the one that actually comes with the starter set. This was also a Kickstarter bonus. I'm not sure if it's going to be available for sale separately, but they are the same character, just different poses and oddly enough, different sized heads. I don't know. I suppose they're different people. They could be different sized heads. Or maybe Privateer Press still hand sculpts or miniatures. I don't know. So then we have the Paladin Weaver. I believe he is kind of a spellcaster. I think a lot of the cipher cards I talked about earlier get, get channeled through him, kind of like an arc node in War Machine. Then we have the Paladin Enforcers. These are your basic infantry. You get three of them, which is one squad. And finally, the guy that's the star of the box. The Firebrand. This is a light warjack, and I have him equipped with a shield, a null cannon up here in his shoulder, and that's the assault rifle and bayonet on his arm, and that's five weapon points, if I did the math correctly, which I'm pretty sure I did. And this guy is a chunk of metal. I think he's probably heavier than a lot of the light warjacks and war machine. Hopefully in the future they're plastic and or resin to make your life easier. But yeah, those are the miniatures inside the Iron Star Alliance Warcast starter set. So let's talk a little bit about the one odd thing I mentioned about the cards earlier, and that for a Warcaster, the quality of them is not quite as good as what Privateer Press has done in the past. I've got a second edition War Machine stack card here as alongside one of the um, weapon cards for Warcaster. And all the cards in this set are a little bit of a thinner cardstock than what you would typically expect from most miniature games. Um, also, some of the stat cards and weapon cards, they don't have a nice gloss finish like, say, for example, the War Machine card does here. Even like stat comparing them up to a, well, shameless plug, Legends of Caladagia Game Crafter card, which is a print-on-demand type card, even these cards, I feel, have a, maybe a little bit more of a cardstock thickness to them. They're a little bit less flimsy, and they have a nice gloss finish to them. Um, the Cypher cards are better off. They have the nice gloss finish, but they are a little bit on the flimsy side compared to what you normally would expect for playing cards. So that may be an issue because you got to shuffle these cards up, you deal them out, you have a hand and play them. So hopefully a few games down the road, they're not getting beaten up really fast, but we will see how that goes. And one final Kickstarter note in case you're wondering, and sometime in the future here, you're looking to buy a copy of this game. You want to know if it's worth spending the money to get some of the Kickstarter bonuses off eBay. Uh, one of the things that was promised was foil cards, and, well, <laughs> there is technically a foil card there. You can see as I move the card back and forth, the Warcaster runes at the top are foil, and that's about it. So, um, if you're expecting something like a Pokemon or Magic Gathering card, or in this case, I got a random Ren and Stimpy card. <laughs> I used to sell um, cards and other tabletop game stuff. Well, I still sell tabletop game stuff. But I used to sell collectibles way back in the day, and that's why I have this random crap around here. But it's definitely, the foil cards are nothing like what you normally get in a collectible card game. So you can consider that if you're watching this, like I said, sometime in the future and deciding if you want to try to pay for some of the Kickstarter extras. But with that, I want to thank you guys all for watching. Once again, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. So go ahead, hit subscribe here, hit like, hit share, because I got some more Warcaster content, well, Warcaster related content coming in the future. I like to say I'll be painting these guys up at some point, but you know, it's <laughs> it took me all locked down to paint for Warhammer, Age of Sigmar, Warcry miniatures, and they were all kind of the same thing. So <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully I'll be painting some Warcaster miniatures on this show in the not too distant future, but let me grab one thing in particular. I'm working on some custom 3D printed terrain that kind of goes along with the theme of this game and kind of like the idea of some of the mining stuff. So we'll be seeing these sets not too far in the future. I've got some tutorials I'm going to 
film for making these and how I modeled them and all that fun stuff. So plenty of more Blender for tabletop game related content coming in the future. So with that, once again, thank you guys all for watching and have a great week. All right, everybody, I want to give one more bonus addendum to this episode because like I mentioned in the main part between when I recorded this and when it got released, I was actually going to play Warcaster Neo Mechanica. I got a game in last night and while well, assuming that we probably got like 85, 90% of the rules correct. And it was one or two things we didn't quite get correct. But you know, it happens first time playing through it. The end result is the game is actually a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to play it again. And hopefully, I'll have more to say at some point in the future. So with that, this episode is officially done. Thanks for watching for like the third time. <laughs>